What's up guys? Today we're in Danbury, Connecticut at Speed Sport tuning the Porsche race car mecca of the world. As you can see, this is not a Porsche. This is a 1991 Ferrari F40, one of the most beautiful Ferraris ever produced. In fact, there's only about 1,315 made from the factory. Today's topic, we're going to talk about how to polish this car. And there's lots of little intricate areas and what tools am I going to use to get in these areas. Also, we're going to chat about residue control. It's a big concept we're going to go over. But before that, I want to chat a little bit about my love for this car. Like I said, 1,315 or so ever made. This is a 2.9 liter V8 twin turbo producing 475, 500 horsepower. In fact, this was the first production or road car to hit 200 miles an hour. So uh, there's lots of history and a lot of love for it. Tons of things to talk about. That's all coming up today on this episode of Ride Along. All right, guys, before we talk about the machines that I use to polish these intricate cars, I just want to preface that uh, make sure that you uh, remove any contaminants, you wash the car, make sure it's clean. The long and short of it is if there's anything on top of the paint, when you go to go, you know, polish or compound or whatever you want to do, that pad, for example, is going to just ride on top of the coating, the sealant, the wax, whatever you have on there. So make sure it is completely what we call naked, okay? So before that, so this thing is naked. And I want to talk to you very, very briefly about these machines, as brief as I can, because there's so many intricate things. Do you need all of these? I don't know. I'm not really sure what your business is, but for me, there's lots of intricate parts. Like, look at this thing back here. I could never get uh, a rupees 21 in there, right? It doesn't make sense, so I have to use other machines. But I want to th show you or chat with you a little bit about the thought process behind it. So this, right off the bat, uh, is uh, one of the LD30s. Really cool. It's a D-nibber. So originally when they designed it, they designed it to, uh, in the body shops, when a little speck of dust would get on the car or there'd be a run, which is super common, you'd come in here <coughs> and just zap it and, you know, there's sand. I have sanding a uh, little disc, but how cute is this? Look how small this thing is. Tiny, right? Uh, and there's little foam pads and whatnot. So you come in there, you zip it out, no problem. What's interesting about this is it's an orbit. Right? It's an orbital. So it only goes side to side, side to side, side to side, side to side, but it does not spin. So it's a little bit limiting. And remember, we chatted a little bit, and now we're going to start getting a bit more complicated. And Kevin Brown uh, from buffdaddy.com, uh, he supplies a lot of these. This, this is very interesting, this one here. Um, but yeah, he supplies a lot of these, and he's uh, informing me, and there's so much information. I'm going to try to get uh, all this on camera. If not, we're going to do it on a podcast, but it's pretty complicated stuff. So I'm going to give small chunks out, um, you know, as well for me, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes to wrap your mind around it. But once, as, as I'm getting it, it's really uh, an amazing concept. And the concept that I'm talking about is the residue control. Okay, so let me use a very, very short example um, that has nothing to do with cars. So if you're sanding, let's say a stone, right? A slab of stone. You're sitting there, ooh, you're grinding the stones all coming up, right? And you see it in the smoke and you got your goggles on. If you see a professional guy who's doing it, he's got a, a, a tube that shoots water in there to push the residue away. So in that scenario, let's take the hose away and he's grinding and the, all those little rocks that are coming up are getting into the, into the bottom of the machine, right? Into the, where the pad is touching the, the, the stone and it's causing more scratches. You know, okay, that makes sense. And the same theory here, all the little bits of clear coat or paint or whatever you're removing from the car, that's still getting stuck in the pad, right? And as it's getting stuck in the pad, you're, you're actually, as you're, you know, you know uh, polishing or compounding, the little bits are actually scratching the paint itself. Does that concept make, does that make sense? Um, it took me a while to understand that too, but um, Kevin Brown makes a really good point. And that's, that's a concept that just let that marinate for a while because that was such a huge like <gasps> aha moment for me. So anyways, uh, moving up to the TA50. Now this has double the throw or the offset, right? The offset I should say, but it also oscillates at the same time. Now, you know, Again, we're going to chat real quickly about uh, residue, and then I'll blow through the rest of these and just give you a little uh, tutorial here. But the residue on something that oscillates, right, back and forth, back and forth, would be very high because it's not really throwing it, it's not really throwing the residue away. But if you have a bigger oscillation, right, and then random orbit and spin at the same time, so you have oscillation and orbit, I should say. You're gonna spit all that out uh, at a higher rate, which is going to lower the residue, which would lower the amount that, uh, of the paint that's getting scratched. Does that hopefully make sense? Because it's, uh, it's pretty out there. 
Uh, very cool. Then we go up to even further one here, and of course, this is one of my favorite ones. This is the LHR75. I've had this one for a long time. Three inch, super cool, and uh, quite a bit of throw on there. We go back to the three inch. This is a rotary, so direct drive, so there's no oscillation, right? It just, it spins, there's no back and forth. And we'll talk a little bit about why I would use this one instead of this one. Remember, rotaries, you know, why would you use that? Da, 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 da. Well, I'll, I'll explain that in the back of the car, and it's pretty interesting because if you're going side to side, you're covering more area. And sometimes I don't want to cover more area if I'm working on a vent, for instance. Then we have um, the 12, uh, the Mini here, very cool, which is equivalent to uh, the three inch uh, Gros Garage, meaning the same uh, size, but the difference is this has a bit more power. And it's more importantly, it has a bigger offset. So it's gonna throw, you know, it's gonna move a whole lot more. Very cool machine. You have the Duetto, uh, which is for uh, a five inch backing plate. And it also, it's Duetto, meaning two, you can sand and you can polish with it. Another uh, great machine that also uh, sort of competes with the uh, Gros Garage six inch random orbital. And then of course the 15, which I don't have, um, and the 21. The 21 is absolutely killer machine, which I'll use on a lot of the flat areas here. So this gives you a little bit of a rundown. Of course, I have the Festool uh, rotary, the old uh, PC that I've had for you know 20 years. There, and then I have these other sanders. We're not sanding anything today, but I want to put it in there because it looks cool. Um, so yeah, let's let's actually get and start polishing a little bit, and I'll show you when I would use one machine versus another. And at the same time, just constantly keep thinking about the residue control. It's just such a cool, amazing concept. Uh, but actually I actually have a lot of work to do on this, so let's get going. Well, I've started polishing the paint, and this is a perfect example of when I would change around machines, right? So I have my 21, got my pad. Look, tons and tons of real estate to do this, no problem. But would I be able to hit this, or would I be able to hit the air scoops? Clearly, I wouldn't be able to do that. So then I'd say, okay, I'm gonna go with my microfiber coating pad, and I'm gonna use the three inch and get in there. And this is, again, electric, the 21 electric. So we talked a little bit before about the machines, but also think, hey, I may not always have access to uh, compressed air, so I may need electric. So this is a fantastic tool, but again, wait. If I were to stick this in here and turn this bad boy on, it's gonna vibrate side to side, and I'll bring the camera in and show you a little bit closer. So it fits in there, but it, I don't really have enough space. Now, are you going to be running into this issue all the time? I don't know. So that's why I was trying to tell you. I'm not saying you must buy all these machines. Of course not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying what the machines are used for are very important when you need them. So the three inch, which normally works on lots of little things, the, uh, the mirrors, the little sides, uh, uh, scoops and things, perfect machine. But what happens when you need something smaller? See down here, right? Or in here. So this is uh, when that other machine comes in, uh, and this is, of course, pneumatic. And you can get in there. Now on the back, I'm gonna show you uh, another trick where this one might not work, and we'd have to go with a rotary. Because remember, this is oscillating. It's a random orbit. It's random. It's going side to side, but it's also spinning. So that side to side action could potentially you know, bump into that and cause little nicks. So then that, I'll show you on the back. Um, I'm gonna do a tiny little vent, but I'll need the three inch because the three inch will stay razor, uh, on a razor's line. It's not gonna go and bang into anything. It's just gonna go right along the edge. So you see how these all integrate? Not one is better than the other. They're just unique for different areas. All right, now we're on the back of the F40 and I wanna show you something pretty neat. These are both three inch machines, right? This one here is the LH75P and it's a rotary or direct drive. We talked about that before. This is the LHR75. This is a random orbital. Now this is the one I've had forever. And I wanna show you, they're both fantastic, but I wanna show you, uh, I know a lot of you are asking me, so when would I use one versus the other? And this is a perfect or prime example. As you can see, there's vents here. So you have this little tiny area, maybe two or three inch little area here, but then it dips down. Now this is, a, again, another fun little concept to talk about and I'll show it to you, uh, uh, you know, live on camera, but as this, let me put this down, as this one, I have no air attached to it, but as this one uh, begins to go, what it's gonna do is see how it's random, uh, random orbit, it's, it's oscillating at the same time. It's going to, hear it? 
it's going to scratch or bang into this da, 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 because it's it's very uh, you know challenging to try to keep it steady unlike this so this is a rotary and it, you know it comes with this little handle i like to take this off so let's take this off so i get right on top here you can find right here i'd go like this right and I'd find a very exact line and I'd match the slope of this one. This happens to be sloped. I'd match the slope and then it's like a, a razor, like I was saying up there. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but um, because this is rotary, it's not going to be, it's, it's not going to be spinning or oscillating where you, like if this was the side here, you bang, 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 bang. See, that makes sense. So uh, rotaries aren't evil. They're great when you're in tight little areas like this where you can't allow the oscillation but when you can i think it's a good idea so that's just a few uh things to think about uh when you're using these different machines so this is why i have so many because of these little intricate things but if you're not doing lots of intricate things you know the 21 is awesome the things like you know the machines that can cover large areas are uh, also good but these these fun little nuances i like to share with you guys on part two of this episode, we discuss how and when to clean your pads throughout the paint correction process. Your pad size choice based on the shape of the body of the car, A-pillar polishing, door jam, scratch removal, and then we take a deep look into the grit guard pad washer to see our paint residue up close. As always, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> All right, we're done. Yeah, you're done? Yeah, you're done? Oh, my God. <laughs>